So we finally begin the road of season nine. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, apologies for how long this took to get started. Admittedly, when I come back from my trip, I was hoping to have started very soon afterwards, but work and everything just came up and then November was a really rough month. I just kept on having to push it back further and further, but I realized if I don't start it now, I'm gonna not be able to get this all in one go and I really wanna try and do that again. So. We are finally, finally starting season nine with I Think I'm Gonna Like It Here. This is the episode following the events of season eight where the angels all fell because of Castiel falling for Metatron's bullshit. Sam nearly dying from trying to complete the final trial. Dean's selfishness let him not die, but there are still ramifications of it. And I like how this episode starts. It seems that at first it looks fine, but then it, the camera all of a sudden goes woo because no, we're not actually in the car. We're inside your head. Shut up. And it kind of reminds me of The Man Who Knew Too Much, which is interesting because I, I did not expect a season six reference in this. I like how we are going through Sam's mind. He's having an argument with Dean, who is the version of him that's trying to tell him to, to live. But then Bobby, of course, they're figuring out a way to get Bobby back in the show. He is trying to tell Sam the opposite, saying, hey, it's your time. It's time to go. I like this confliction in his own head. It's a different version of what he was going through in The Man Who Knew Too Much. All the while, Dean is trying to figure out how to save Sam because he's in a hospital and we find out just how much the trials broke his body and it only takes four minutes for this line to make me go cringe. I'm afraid that's in God's hands now. The fuck you mean? Nah. -uh. nah. I guess maybe they thought they were really smart with this line when they wrote it but it just uh, it comes across so cringy. Oh and by the way apparently Crowley is in this episode via knocking from the inside of the trunk. I have watched this episode about three three times trying to prep for this and I keep forgetting that Crowley is in the trunk but it doesn't really matter because Neen has put out a message on Angel Radio and I really like how it works because it reminds me of when John Wick went on contract and John Wick 2 and the whole world word went out and everyone's like oh where they all stop what they're doing with their mundane things and they're like oh we've got to go get him and fortunately the first person that answers Dean's message is not exactly a friendly angel and just when you think things are about to go bad so enters in our hero, Walmart brand Luke Evans, otherwise known as Canadian actor Tom O'Pennicott. Got this weird British accent. This young man has prayed for our sisters. Are we creatures of wrath or compassion? This is Ezekiel, and Ezekiel, after beating and killing the other angel and a really bad ring fire effect, Walmart brand Evans proves that he is on Dean's side. He wants to help. And while this is going on, Castiel is having an interesting time of his own. He is realizing that he is in fact human. He will get hurt, he will bleed, he can no longer use his powers on anyone, so he is human. We're all taking note of this, right? Full on had no powers, there's nothing here. Like, so I'll keep that in mind. I'm keeping that in mind for my own sake. He goes to a gas station, which actually is out in Maple Ridge. It's actually not a gas station, or at least it's not one anymore, but it's always used as though it is one. Uh, he also comes across another angel. This is one of the many angels who fell and she recognized who Castiel is. While they're figuring out just how calamitous everything is, Castiel is trying to tell her, hey, you know, you shouldn't worry about this stuff that I caused. You should just like go off and do things of your own and not focus on the catastrophe I caused. And we see that later on in the episode after he has a phone call with Dean and they figure out what's going on. She basically kidnaps him because he's like, no, I gotta go help these guys. And he's like, no, you, you're you helping me. And after he gets knocked down, he gets put in the car. She's saying like, I I need to take over your body because there's that's the only way we're gonna figure out how this works. Give Cass credit. He actually has one moment of wisdom amongst his utter mountain of stupidity, he knows what a seatbelt is. You'd be surprised how many main characters in movies and TV shows don't know what a seatbelt is. After she gets launched out of the car, he again does a little bit more gaslighting. Actually, is just telling her that everything isn't my fault. And she's like, no, angels want to kill you. He's like, no, you're wrong. I'm one of you. Bro, that's real bad denial. So bad denial that he kills her because he just can't accept the problems he's caused. Damn, Cass, you just... 
Not a character to root for, really. You're already off to a real bad start, my bro. Back at the hospital, Dean encounters more of the angels, all the while Walmart brand Luke Evans is sort of trying to heal him. He gets the shit kicked out of him, but he does have this really cool bit where he is able to vanquish the angels with a pretty cool line. If heaven is locked, then where do you go when I do this? Walmart Evans tells Dean just how dire the situation is. It's not good. He's meeting with death. So they got two cameos in the first episode. Woo hoo hoo, big things for season nine, I guess. He says that basically that Sam will die unless he possesses him. Dean says no at first, so Walmart Evans accepts that and he respects it until Dean has to become selfish again. And when he sees that death is visiting him, he's like, no, I do not want Sam to die, even though Sam wants to die. So they do the thing and they possess him and that saves Sam. We start with the drama right off the bat, people, because once Terminator Sam, which he does, once Ezekiel is in him, he's walking and talking like a Terminator. It's pretty funny. Ezekiel apparently has the ability to kind of get rid of the memories of him in the hospital. And then him and Dean agree that they're just going to lie. They just won't tell Sam what's going on. And that's it. That's the opener of season nine. We don't really get stakes about what's going on other than that angels are obviously pissed and that Sam and Ezekiel are going to have this who, who, who kind of relationship to heal him. But otherwise, we don't really know what the season will entail. And I have a feeling that might perpetuate into how the other the rest of the season goes. But again, we will see how this goes. I really do not remember season nine. I remember season nine as much as I remember season 10. And I barely remember that season as well. But I do know how season nine ends. And I do remember that Metatron is actually not a very good villain in this season. But I guess we will see as we go along. But regardless, that is the first episode. While it doesn't really stack up to anything, it does have some interesting little interludes with Sam having a conversation in his own head. We get introduced to a few new characters and one of them dies, but then we get Walmart brand Luke Evans because that's how I've always viewed this actor. Overall, it's not that great of a starter to be truly honest. You don't really know what the stakes are and the only thing that happens is that Sam just doesn't die. So we have an extenuation of what happened in the previous season finale. There's no stakes and I kind of think that maybe they will build on this. To be honest, I don't think it's that great of a starter and I think that there's so much kind of uh here, especially with Cass, is just straight up deniability of what's going on. It's just not a good start for me. It's not terrible, but it's just kind of eh. I've watched this episode three times and I've had to do so because every time I do it, I mean to review it and then I have to go and do something. When I come back, I can't remember the fucking episode. That is how bland this opener is, especially in comparison to all the season openers before that. So that is why I'm going to give this episode of Supernatural, the opener of season nine, a three out of seven. And that is it, guys. We are starting. We are on the road now. We are going to get this done this year. I'm very excited to talk about it. Truly speaking, a little bit worried and kind of hesitant because I'm kind of like with this season, but I'm very excited to see what you guys have to say. We're going in to go into episode two, that being the Devil May Care episode. So make sure to give me guys those comments and thoughts about that episode. And I will read those off in the next review. And yeah. So we're, uh, we're finally starting this road. Two more seasons, people. 66 episodes. That is all that's left. And then I will have reviewed every single episode of Supernatural. Yay! This took forever to do, but yeah. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, if you did leave a like. And if you're interested in more, subscribe. And until then, I'll see you on the next episode.